Well, congratulations. You've made it all the way to CD4. Here you're going to learn some of my most favorite skills, three-way calling, the importance of edification, and also the importance of events. What we want to cover right now, we've gone through the dream, we've talked about reasons why, we've talked about the importance of list building, contacting and inviting, the importance of a sense of urgency, we've talked about how to build through the cold market. What we're going to talk about now is three-way calling and the importance of edification. This one here, guys, is so important. I want you to understand the importance of, of this tool. Remember what we talked about. Tools are just nothing more than systems or mechanisms that make doing your job a whole lot easier and simpler. Three-way calling, in my opinion, is one of the most important tools in network marketing. I think it's the most underutilized tool in network marketing as well. Why is that? is because we have a system of education and most people have not gotten that education and they don't understand the importance of it. So what I want to do here is I want you to pay close attention to this one here. Because if you want to really skyrocket your business, if you want to start building a massive organization, guys, learn how to do three-way calls and learn how to teach your people how to do three-way calls. Teach your people how to do three-way calls and I'll tell you, you will make an absolute fortune. There's several different methods of exposure that we have in the business. Several different methods of exposure. And I think the baseball diamond really simplifies the steps that you process a new prospect. We have several different modes of exposure. We have executive lunches, you have business briefings, you have one-on-ones, you have two-on-ones, you have conference calls, you have a sizzle line, you have PBRs, you have several different modes of exposing the business. You can do three-foot rules, you can do tape handout. And so with those several different modes, each of those modes are very important, but that's just the method of exposure. That's only the method of exposure. So we talk about the zones as well. The white zone is what? Massive exposure. That's when you should understand what your plan is for this month. How many people are you going to send to a business briefing? How many people are you going to have go through an executive luncheon? How many people are you going to do a one-on-one with? Know what your numbers are before you even start the month. I was listening to Jim Rohn, and he said this. He said, when should you start your week? as soon as it's finished. <laughs> to go out and try to start building a week before you've designed it is kind of crazy. What if they start building this hotel before they had it finished up here? Wouldn't work. You follow what I'm saying? So have a purpose. Be on purpose. There's no success by accident. And so understanding this three-way calling is going to be very important to your success in the business. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire warm market training You've had that before, but I want you to understand something here. You've got your prospects up here, and what your goal is to swing. Your, your goal is to swing. That's just the sifting and sorting that we're talking about. You sifted and sorted. You got them to first base, and that was to get them to one of these events. Here is the sifting and sorting process. This is what we talked about when you first start building a list and your invite, your approach, contacting and inviting. You've gotten them to one particular event. Whether it's a business briefing, whatever it is, any method of exposure, that's first base. That's important. But the key thing is this here. You're trying to get a score. Your goal is to score. Once you've got them here, once you've gone ahead and swung, your goal is to get them to first base and to get them to second base. Sometimes they go all the way from second base and they'll come in to score. Sometimes you have to get them to third base. Well, how do you get them to other bases? It's what we call BAM FAM. BAM FAM. B A M F A. M. Book a meeting from a meeting. You book a meeting from a meeting. Well, guess what? A three-way call is a meeting, in my opinion, is one of the most important meetings that you can have in network marketing. Because now this is when you're going to start passing the buck. You're going to start passing on and allow somebody else who has the credibility to use their credibility to close your prospects. So the three-way call is very important. Let me give you a couple of elements and some etiquette on three-way calling and the importance of the edification on three-way calling. First of all, when you're doing a three-way, you want to make sure, if at all possible, you set up a time with your upline to do a three-way. If at all possible, set up a time. Now, sometimes you just may be at the spur of the moment. You have a prospect, a hot prospect. You haven't set up a time. You know that you need to bam fam. And getting them on the phone with your upline leader, if you may need to get them on the phone with Derwin, get them on the phone with Regina or Ed or, or whoever it is that you may need to get them on the phone with right away, and you may not have an appointment. That's okay. Try to have an appointment. That way, we don't have to rush. And that way you don't have to not have your upline be available. So 
what you're going to do is get them to set up a time. The second thing that you want to do is just make sure that you be on time. If you set up a time at 3 o'clock, 3.03 is not acceptable to call. 3.01 is not acceptable to call. Don't call at 3.05 and say, hey, listen, I've been trying to get him and I can't get him, so we're just going to have to cancel the call because next time you try to set up an appointment, we may not be available because you've already set up a system and a habit to let us know that you're not going to honor the time that you set up. So if you can't get them, your upline needs to get a call at, at least five minutes beforehand. Say, hey, listen, I have not gotten them. I'm just calling to let you know that I haven't gotten my prospect. I'm going to try to get them, and I'll call you back right at 3 o'clock if I don't get them. Or I'll call you back a minute before 3 if I can't get them. But that way we at least know where our time is going to be spent. The key thing is this, guys. It's very simple and easy to put people in this business, and there's thousands of people. Some of you are going to have hundreds, and some of you are going to have thousands of people in your group, and you're going to be doing three ways left and right, and you just want to make sure that your time is well spent or well invested. So honor the time. Make sure that the person has seen a presentation. Don't go from sifting and sorting to second base or to a three-way. Don't bam fat. Don't book them to the first meeting on a three-way call. Why? Because what you're asking your upline to do is sell the business for you. That's not our job. I don't sell the business at all. Anybody I have to sell the business to, I'll have to sell them to come to a function. I'll have to sell them to buy a product. I'll have to sell them on being on auto ship, and I'm not in the sales business. I am in the business of developing and mentoring people who want to make a six- and seven-figure income. And I can't develop somebody who, need, who I need to sell to do the things that's required to build a business. Make sure that they've been exposed to the business. Why? Because I don't want to get on and have to talk about the products and services that we market. I don't want to talk, I don't need to get on the business and have to explain to them for the first time that we have a cold market program, an app program. I don't want to get on for the first time and have to explain the different industries that we participate in through our company. That's not what I want to do. The purpose of a three-way call is for somebody else that you've edified to validate what they've just heard. Remember I talked about social proof? People need social proof. This gives them the social proof that somebody else is doing it, somebody else is having success, and that we have a testimony. Now, edification. You want to make sure that you've already edified your upline or whoever's doing the three-way call for you, and it always is your upline. Never cross-line, never somebody in your success team as well. It's always upline. Let me share with you what I call the edification triangle. The edification triangle. And then we'll get back to the process of edification. If you look here, this is a triangle. This is you. This is your prospect. And this is your expert or your upline. I want you to understand something. Well, why is it important for you to get validation? Because people who know you personally... They know you. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. You can't beat your own chest. You can't tell them how great you are, but guess what? Somebody else that you edified, they can. And we can make you look like a hero, but you can't do it yourself. Vice versa. You can make me look like a hero to that person. I can't get on the phone and talk about how great I am. I can't talk about the money I've made. I can't talk about all of those things, but you can do it for me. That's very important, guys. The edification is incredible. This is the key thing here. The people that you know will listen to somebody that they don't know before they'll listen to you. That's people. If you understand people, you'll make money. So between you and your prospect, there's what we call trust. They do trust you. They know that you'll never do anything illegal, immoral, or unethical. They have trust for you. I want you to understand this edification triangle. There's trust. Between you and your prospect, there is trust, but there is no respect. They don't have the respect that you can help them make a six or a seven figure income because they know that you just borrowed 200 bucks from them two weeks ago. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Does that make sense? They don't respect your ability. That's why people say, well, I've been trying to get them to a meeting and they aren't coming. That's why. You are trying to sell them, and they already know that you're two months behind on Visa. They already know that you had this repossessed. They already, know, they already know that stuff, and they're like, man, if she was making so much money or he was making so much money, you know, um, why did they borrow some money from me? So they don't have any respect for you in that sense. They understand what you're, even if you're doing okay right now, but they know your past. 
See, I couldn't sell the people or I couldn't present and tell the people how great the business was even after I had made a lot of money in this industry because people knew what my past was. They knew what my past was. That's what they remember. You follow what I'm saying? But they do have trust for me. They know I wouldn't put them in anything bad. They don't have any respect, but they do have trust. Between you and your expert, based on how you edify them, there is no trust because they don't know that person from Adam. But there is a lot of respect. Because of the things that you have said about your expert. Before you put a person on a three-way call with your, with your upline, make sure that you've edified. Now, you edify their accomplishments and the people that they've helped in this business. You edify their accomplishments and the people that they've helped in this business. Does that make sense to you? So if I'm putting a person on the phone, and let's just say here I got Derwin, and Derwin is my upline. Oh, I'll just give you a, uh, an even better example of, of uh, what, I've, what I've actually done and how I've actually, the exact things that I've said. I'm putting people on the phone with Brad. Before I get Brad on the phone, I remember I've already established my appointment. He knows exactly what time I'm calling. I let them know. I say, hey, listen, I'm bam family. They went to an appointment. They liked what they saw, but they didn't make a decision. Great. I tell you what. You know, I was talking to Brad. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. This guy went from $35 in the bank to over $300,000 in cash in his bank after he paid all, all of his bills in just one year, 12 months in this business. He's a multimillionaire helping thousands of people. His goal is to help 100 people become a millionaire. I've already been selected as one of them, and we're looking for some other people. Brad told me that if I found somebody who was sharp like you, he'd take five minutes of his time and see if he can talk to you and tell you what he's doing to develop these millionaires. Do you think that person has some value for Brad's time now? Oh, yeah. See, they don't understand who Brad is, or they don't understand who you are or who your upline is until you say it. They don't understand anything about his past. All they know is the good things that I just told them about him. Does that make sense to you? That's all that they know. And so what I'll do then is this. Great. Three o'clock. I'll give you a call. I actually call you five minutes to three. We'll see if we can get five minutes of his time. They've already been exposed to the business. And so now what happens is this. I'm going to get them on the phone with Brad. This is what's happening, guys. This is incredible. This is why three-way calls are so incredible. They've got the trust for me, but they don't have respect. They don't have trust for Brad, but they've got respect. Now we've got trust, plus we've got respect. That's going to equal success. Every single time, if you do it right. That's the edification part. I'm going to build him up. I'm going to let them know, hey, he's a very good friend of mine. He's got a large organization. His time is very, very valuable. And I don't know if he can give you 10 minutes, but I'm sure I can probably get five minutes. I'm building up his time. I'm making it seem like, hey, listen, this is going to be an honor, because it is, to speak to my upline or the person who's helping me build a business. Let me share something with you. It doesn't have to be a diamond. It doesn't have to be a platinum who you edify like that. Guess what? It can be your upline director. If they've helped you pop an ad in the paper, if they've helped you close a person, if they've done a PBR for you, guess what? That's the person who's helping you. Once upon a time, I was a director. People couldn't edify me as a platinum, but they edified me just like I was a platinum. You follow what I'm saying? It's not the pen that you edify, it's the person. It's the person that you edify. You edify the person. Now, so I've already done my edification. Don't get on the phone and then start the edification because I don't want to hear a two-minute thing on how great I am. Edify before you get on the phone with me. And then when you get them on the phone, this is how the phone call goes. Hey, Brad, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to talk to my prospect or to talk to Greg. Brad, I know your time is very, very valuable. Greg's excited. He saw the plan. And uh, you know what? His uh, major concern was uh, the amount of money that could be made. Or his concern was that he'd been in network marketing before and, and uh, really, really wasn't able to build it, wasn't plugged into a system. Greg, I want you to meet Brad Hager. This is my, uh, my upline. This is the uh, number one income earner in the company. I've told you a lot about him. Greg, I want you to meet Brad. Brad, I want you to meet Greg. And I shut my mouth. I shut my mouth, and I don't say one other word at all. Zero, nothing whatsoever. Well, why is that? Who's the expert here? My upline. 
I'm not edifying me, I'm edifying him. As soon as I start to talk before I'm spoken to, what I'm saying is that he's not the expert, you need to be listening to me, and so what he's saying is not important. Because most of you are on the phone, especially the brand new people, you're so excited, and you're thinking, oh, you know what, oh, uh, I hadn't heard him talk about the ad program. You didn't tell him about, you know, you didn't tell him about this particular product. You didn't tell him about how he can save money on travel. You didn't tell him about this and that. Because, see, you're on one wavelength, and we're on a whole other one. That's why you always do three waves with somebody who's plugged into the system who understands people. Because, see, because we understand people, we know what motivates them, and that's why we get paid the big bucks, because we've learned the art of dealing with people. There's certain things I may say to a Bobby that I may not say to a Wendy. There are certain things I may say to Wendy that I may not say to Regina. Certain things I'll say to Kenneth that I may not say to Brina or I may not say to Shanita because I'm there listening. See, the three-way call is not about saying the right things. It's about listening. It's about listening and getting them to sell themselves. You've already done the edification. I'm not going to get on there and sell the business to them. So as soon as you talk, this is what happens here, guys. I want to just give you kind of an ironclad rule. This may seem kind of harsh, but after you do it a couple of times, you'll understand how important it is. As soon as you start talking, the first time after we get off the three-way, I'll let you know, give you a little bit of coaching. Second time you start talking, I hang up the telephone. I'll let you continue the conversation yourself. Hey, listen, I got a call. I got a catch. I'll talk with you all later. And I'll let you finish. I've done it a couple of times. Guess what? The people have never, ever, ever come back and start talking again. Guys, that's very, very important. Don't start buying it back. This person is the expert. That means that they understand the business. You've edified them. They have respect for them. They don't have respect for you. So anything that you say is not respected. This is very important, guys. This is the edification and communication triangle when it comes to doing a three-way call. Your upline typically will ask for the check on that three-way call. We're going to ask for the check. Should we not get the check? Guess what we're going to do? Bam, fam. Bam, fam. Book a meeting from a meeting. They don't make a decision when they're on the phone with me? Great. Well, I'll tell you what, Willie. You know, I understand that you had those concerns and you need to uh, speak it over with your wife. Listen, why don't you do this here? Saturday morning, I'm having a training session. Why don't you come and see and get these questions answered because you know what? I want you to understand our orientation program. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. Let me ask you a question, Willie. What do you have going on at Saturday that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? See, I don't ask him, can he come? How many of you made your own decision to come? I don't ask a person, can they come? We're not, there's no bondage. None of you are in jail, except from 9 to 5. But anyway, um, <laughs> just kidding. So I'm not going to ask him, can he come? Willie, what are you doing at 9 o'clock Saturday morning that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. What are you doing? I'm telling you guys, l learn these phrases. You wonder why the three percenters make all the money? It's because we understand how to communicate with people. I know how to get the right answer from Will Willie. Willie, what are you doing Saturday morning that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? He may have golf planned. But if I ask him, well, Willie, uh, do you have anything planned for Saturday morning? Yes, I got golf. But I'll say, Willie, what do you have planned that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? Nothing. Great. Willie, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, this is where you need to meet me. I want you to see our orientation and our training program. It's going to blow you away, and you'll understand why so many people in this company are making money. 9 o'clock, be dressed sharp. I want to introduce you to some people. You will be there, won't you, Willie? Willie, you will be there, won't you? <laughs> he says, you bet. <laughs> He's writing it down. Did you write down, you bet? <laughs> so I'm bam famming, if you follow me, okay? Now, once you've bam fam, you keep bam famming until you get them on to home plate. See, guys, I'll tell you, it's a process. It's like an assembly line. It's an assembly line. That's all. It's a pipeline. That's all it is. We can call it a baseball diamond. You can call it a pipeline. You can call it an assembly line. Guess what? When you start a process of an assembly line, they start with the raw materials, with the base, with the frame of what's going on. The frame of what's going on here is you're sifting and sorting. You're finding out if that person is looking for an opportunity. This is where you're looking to collect a decision on whether or not they will get on your assembly line. Once you do that, you put the first part on them, and that's the opportunity. You let them get exposed to the opportunity through some method or fashion. So that means that they started from here on the assembly line, they moved over to here. Now, if they didn't make a decision there, 
What's going to happen is they're going to move further along down the assembly line, and they're going to get Bam Fam to a three-way call. They don't make a decision there. We're going to Bam Fam them again, maybe to another three-way call, even on the higher-up line. You follow what I'm saying? Don't start out with me. Most of you think, well, you know what? I need to get Holton to do my three-ways. No. I was doing three-ways when I was a director closing people. Has nothing to do with the pen. Do three-ways with your plugged-in upline who understands our system. That's who you do three ways with. Why? Because, see, guess what? If you passed up Bobby and you went straight to me, or if you passed up me and you went straight to Brad, guess what? They may need another three-way call. Who are they going to do it with? Nobody. So you start down here, and then you start working your way up. You know what they see? Man, there is a chain of people that I have access to who understands this business, and each person I talk to made more money and more money and more money. And then they start to see that they have access to that as well. So if they don't get in there, guess what? We bam fam them to a training. They don't get there, we bam fam them to a meeting. Guess what? I didn't make a decision on the phone when I first talked to Brad. Guess what he did? He understood. He bam fam me to the very next meeting, which was that same day, and I was 1,000 miles away, and that was a $600 plane ticket, a couple hundred dollars a night for a hotel, and I had four hours to make a decision. But what if he was some inexperienced rookie scared to ask me, what am I doing to make a six-figure, seven-figure income in the next four hours? I wouldn't be in the business today. I guarantee you, if I would have waited till he came to Dallas, I it would have never happened. The be back bus never comes back. <laughs> the be back bus never comes back. Well, you know what? I'll be back. I'll just come to another meeting. The be back bus never comes back. And so I wouldn't, and you wouldn't be here either. But I was so glad that he had the fortitude to say, hey, what are you doing today? Why don't you come meet me today? Four, you know, I had four hours to be there. I made a decision quickly. Okay, I'll do it. Went, saw the plan. He bam fam me. I didn't even sign up when I was there. I wanted to play hard to get, like I'm some big, you know, big shot. <laughs> Guess what? They bam fam me again with Ron Goals. Hey, listen, Holton, when you get back home, I know you got a couple people that you want to talk to. Why don't we do this? Let me talk to you and those couple of people and tell them what you just saw. I gave an appointment. See, successful people honor their appointments. So if I book the appointment, guess what? I got to honor it. Now he bam fam me. Now guess what he's got? Not only me, he's got my group to talk to. If I don't do it, they're going to do it. So I got to do it anyway. The pros understand this stuff. The professional people understand the art of bam family. Ron Goes talks about it. How many of you have ever been to a dental, dental office, walked out of there, and they didn't schedule your next appointment? Never happened. They understand bam family. Before you leave, I mean, they'll hit the security on that door and won't let you. Hold on for a second. I mean, why you, I went and got a root canal recently. While I'm in the chair, while I'm in the chair, I mean, the lady comes in there, hey, listen, your next appointment is going to be this here date. What, date, what time is going to be better for you, morning or afternoon? Guess what they do? People in the dentistry business, they have classes, training on how to bam fam. It doesn't happen by accident. This is all on purpose. All of this is on purpose. You bam fam. You book a person from a meeting to a meeting. Three-way calling, very important. As many prospects as you have going through, this, through your pipeline, guys, you should be three-waying like crazy. It's real easy to sponsor people. You know why some of your businesses are not growing to the degree of what you want them? Because you are not disciplined. Is it that you don't know how? All the information that I'm teaching you right now, all of you know how to do it already. You're just not doing what you know how to do. You'll get started here at home plate. You'll go to first base. You get so excited because they showed up at your business briefing or they showed up. You think you've already scored because they showed up. It's nowhere near over. They showed up, and guess what they'll tell you? Oh, this looks real good. Man, this is awesome. I think I'm going to do it. I'll get back with you. You say, okay, great. Awesome. Here's my phone number. Get back with me. That's a rookie way to handle that. What you do is this. Great. Nicole, I work by calendar. I'm sure that you do as well. My time is valuable. So is yours. I know you want to get back with me, but let me see when you can. I'll take out my calendar. It's a Thursday business briefing. Great. I'll tell you what. Uh, I've got tomorrow and Saturday open. Which day is better for you? Friday. Friday, I've got two times available, morning or afternoon. 
If we do morning, we'll do 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we'll do 4 o'clock Friday. And I only have about 15 minutes to go over some things here. Which time can we do, 4 o'clock or 10? I give them, the, it's called the alternate close. I let them choose one. Either or. Either or. You give them two options, they have to choose one. People are conditioned to make a decision based on the options that they have. How many of you have ever gone to a buffet that didn't have lobster and say, hey, listen, can I have lobster? You don't say that because that's not your options. You choose what's on the menu. I always provide a menu. Here, 10 o'clock or 4 o'clock, that's the menu. That's what you're going to choose from. Great. Let's go ahead and take out our calendars and let's mark that. Wow, what a concept. You mean to tell me you take out a calendar when you ban famming? Absolutely. Ban famming without a calendar is almost certain to end in disappointment.